The mid-year budget communication delivered in Parliament today. Health and safety protocols relaxed a bit and JCN's under new management. Good evening everyone, I'm Leah Cooper with your JCN News for this Wednesday, March 9th. The 2021-2022 mid-year budget statement presented in the House of Assembly this morning by Finance Minister Prime Minister Philip Davis. This is the first report mid-year budget statement and report on fiscal performance of the Davis administration. The mid-year budget provides for accountability and transparency to Bahamians as it reports on the government's fiscal performance against budget targets at the midpoint of the fiscal year. That said, Prime Minister Davis indicated that since becoming the government some 174 days ago, there is a palpable sense of newfound optimism that the country is now on the right track. Signs are clearly pointing to a rebound in the Bahamian economy, and this has translated to improved revenue collections. While this is encouraging news, I would remind this Honorable House that my government remains firm in our commitment to hold steadfast to the promise that we made to the Bahamian people. That is, we will ensure that improved revenue for the government translates to more than merely numbers on a piece of paper but rather to actual relief for our citizens. We will do this while also remaining prudent in managing the affairs of state in order to reverse the change, the damage brought to the economy and public finances over the past four and a half years. For the first six months of the year, total revenue collections are estimated at $1.2 billion, an increase of $453.8 million over the prior year when the country was placed under oppressive lockdowns, stifling our economy. As such, revenue to date represents some 48.2% of the full year estimate. Tax revenue improved during the first half of the fiscal year by 389.2%. $8 million to $959.3 million as compared to the same period last year. According to Prime Minister Davis, while some of this improvement in revenue collection may be attributed to an improvement in general economic conditions, undoubtedly the elimination of emergency orders and curfews by the administration gave Bahamian businesses more breathing room and contributed to this rebound. VAT receipts were elevated by 101.4% or $287.2 million to total $573.5 million and 61.9% of the budget. Similarly, non-tax revenue improved by $63.7 million to $167.6 million. Now, the Prime Minister noting that the Russian invasion of Ukraine in the past two weeks and the consequent imposition of sanctions by countries around the world are likely to have an impact on our economy. He says the government is monitoring the situation extremely closely, especially in relation to upward pressure on energy prices and other commodities that are likely to affect the Bahamas most. He says the government is committed to not increasing taxes or fees in the short term as they believe that this surge in inflation is not structural in nature. My government remains committed to balancing the priorities of supporting the most vulnerable in society while also ensuring prudent management of the country's finances. While my government continues to expand support and correct the injustices of the past few years, we are thus careful to limit the growth in expenditure. Accordingly, I'm pleased to report that during the first half of the fiscal year, total expenditure increased minimally by $3.6 million to $1.4 billion, representing 44.1% of the budget. In terms of recurrent expenditure, preliminary ex estimates indicate an increase of $12.8 billion to $1.3 billion. 
With COVID-19 infections and hospitalizations decreasing daily, the Prime Minister during his statement on the 2021-2022 mid-year budget updated parliamentarians, Bahamians and residents on the further relaxation of COVID-19 restrictive measures that were implemented to mitigate the spread of coronavirus in the country. Cruise ships no longer need to present a passenger and crew manifest disclosing vaccination status. There has been a reduction to the testing requirements for day five post-travel. Residential care establishments are now able to set their own parameters for visitors. Salons, barbershops and spas will now be allowed to operate at 50% of seating capacity. Restrictions regarding recitals, regattas, in-person conferences, seminars or workshops and drive through cookouts will be relaxed. These events will not require submissions for review and approval by the advisory committee. Restrictions surrounding large events will also be eased. Prime Minister Davis says the Ministry of Health will provide more comprehensive details regarding the restrictions. A solemn moment in the halls of Parliament this morning as parliamentarians paid tributes to former Senator the late Patricia Coakley and attorney Edward Turner, husband of former leader of the official opposition and deputy leader of the free national movement, Loretta Butler Turner. Leading off tributes was Prime Minister Philip Davis, who spoke to the impact the late Senator Coakley had on the Bahamian society and offered condolences to Turner's family. This is the ultimate tribute who we, who remain, could pay to the life and work of Dame Coakley. She personified Bahamian exceptionalism and patriotism. I thank her for her service to the Bahamas, the country she dearly loved. I thank her family for their forbearance in knowing her to us. Our country is better and more civil because of the life and work of Dame Coakley. Now go with God then, Patricia Cooper, and receive your just and eternal reward. You are, you are a good and faithful servant who ran a very good place. And I add, may the angels lead you into paradise. I, so I just take this opportunity in these limited words at this time to say to Loretta and the family, that our prayers and my prayers will continue to be with her. I did have the occasion to engage her in conversations yesterday. It was a tortuous exchange, um, understandably so, in the circumstance. And we just wish her to stay strong and always remember that though death has visited her, that is not the end. Death is never, is never really a full stop. It's rather a comma in the sentence of all our lives. Opposition leader Michael Pintard also extended condolences on behalf of the Free National Movement. While I did not know her personally, I mean, avid, or I should say was an avid basketball player. <laughs> and so, um, I miles the road for many years on the basketball court. But one of the things she is uh, most known for is the many years, I believe it was a little over two decades of dedication in the Catholic Diocese to developing the basketball program, particularly at the, at the early stages, at the primary school stages. The one thing that strikes me and strikes many of us who have known him for years is that incredible smile. So <laughs> anytime he comes to mind, it is, it is, his, his face is painted uh, with this smile. As, as you know, he's a noted uh, attorney, a uh, member of the lodge, as was uh, referenced. He's also a, a dedicated, was a dedicated Rotarian. And of course, the, he and his wife just recently celebrated, I believe it was 31 years of, of marital bliss. 
with potentially millions of dollars being sought in pension and accrued interest. Close to 400 former employees of the now-closed City Markets and Winn-Dixie Food Store chain are preparing for another round of battles in the Supreme Court, a case now 10 years in the making. Wenslaw Turnquest is the court-appointed representative for the employees, and before they return to court next Friday, he is calling for them to unite and prepare for what will hopefully be the final push to victory. But we're having an emergency meeting for all City Market and Winn-Dixie former employees this Sunday, the 13th, at 3 p.m. on Fort Charlotte, so we can bring them up to date with the findings and exactly what, what took place in court. We have some issues that we have to iron out, and I want to make sure that due diligence is done and their interest is represented and protected. And that's why we're calling this meeting, and we're trying to find a roadmap to satisfy financially what is actually owed to them. It's now over 10 years, from 2012, since the company closed. Mr. Turnquest says the former City Market Winn-Dixie employees have been quiet over the past few years because the matter is before the court. However, he says many of the former employees are upset and struggling and can make great use of money owed to them. 356 employees with seven at the closure of the company in March of 2000, February of 2012. Then you have 370 persons with entitlement, pension entitlements. And now it is at that point where a lot of employees have died. A lot of employees have medical issues. Um, a lot of employees are very sick at the moment. Uh, oh, close to 100 or more have died. And so now they have families and children. Um, I have uh, employees on dialysis. I have employees with cancer. I have employees with um, heart, heart problems. Uh, they, could, they could use those funds right now. There was a settlement agreement approved by the Supreme Court in January of 2015 with the city market employees to receive $2.6 million worth of preference shares in Trinity Limited, a company listed under Associated Bahamian Distillers and Brewers owned by the Finlayson Company owned by the Flanason family, rather. However, we understand that the settlement was not honored and is now considered by the employees to be null and void. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.